Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. Please turn where I turn. Go where I go. Follow me along in the scriptures today. Please. Please turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to Psalm 133. Psalm 133. Hopefully, hopefully we can finish this whole psalm before time runs out out here. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garments, as the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. Oh, behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. You know, recently um, we had, once again, our best friend, our beloved brother Alexander Hartley, join us up here for a little while um, to have fellowship, um, also to shoo hospitality onto uh, the beloved of the Lord. And um, it was, it's always great when, um, when our best friend comes and joins us. It's always a blessing. It's always a great thing. And uh, we even, uh, the three of us, my wife, uh, my best friend, our best friend, excuse me, the three of us, uh, the Lord brought us all together and came up with um, a video together. The three of us worked on it. And uh, it was just very beautiful. It was very beautiful. But, um, and that's not the video that we're going to engage in today. It's, it's interesting. See, when you have a brother who you are like-minded with. The Lord will use that in wonderful ways to the praise of his glory. Uh, for example, our best friend, we are, we are like-minded. Um, uh, we are like-minded with many of the Church of the Living God, those who we are in close communications with. This morning I woke up with a part of this video that we are going to be engaged in today. And it just so happens that a dear friend of mine sent me notes. Um, it's like, hey, you know. And lo and behold, it was kind of what I was already thinking about. And then my dear friend, a dear friend, sends this to me this morning. It's like, okay. <laughs> I see what you want me to speak about. And this is what we are going to be speaking about today. And uh, this video is a collaborated effort. Myself and a dear friend um, who... <laughs> I woke up this morning with some of this on my mind. Just woke up, you know, thinking about it, you know. Lord guided me into a, the Lord before I even looked. The Lord uh, led me onto a few scriptures. Then I looked uh, in the emails. It's like, wow, like mindedness. It's a privilege, brethren, if you find someone with whom you are truly like minded with. We're going to be talking about something today of infiltration in a different kind of a different type. Apparently, there is a lot of bickering going on within the Church of the Living God, apparently. I say apparently because I do my best to avoid being on YouTube or other platforms. <laughs> I, many of you, praise the Lord, Many of you contact me, okay? So I am kept in the loop of things through email. But apparently there is strife, debate going on within the Church of the Living God. Um, I am not privy to it, but um, a dear friend of mine, a brother, 
who has who sees this not going to doubt him and there's a problem when brethren when brethren brethren who are truly saved born again converted behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity the question then immediately well who's my brother you are if you say you are oh oh you're my brother because you can utter jesus christ is come in the flesh jesus is the lord that no no you and i we have discussed at length uh, many things to look out for for those who are false those who have come in to spy out our liberty those who claim to be of us but they're not of us Okay, they went out from us that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. Okay, we have talked at length together about that subject and topic. There will be links in the description box talking about that, that you can look up uh, and go through the scriptures together, you and I and whatnot. Okay, but when there is this contention, accusing, finger pointing, you know, when, when brethren, saved brethren, you know, and who is my brother? There's a video uh, I'll put in the description box with that title, Who is My Brother? Please watch it. But see, when, when saved brethren have a disagreement or a problem with each other, and why do we have problems one with another, brethren? Right here. Right here. The flesh. The skin suit. Every time. That's the problem. It's our flesh. Okay. I had a problem with a brother in Canada. Uh, he had a problem with me. And this problem blew up to the point where we will not speak to each other ever again. And I forgive you. You do your thing. He's let me do my thing. You know, but when brethren have disagreements, and it's every time, it's because of flesh, okay? But when brethren have disagreements, it's a little bit more sim simple. Okay, I don't agree with you. We're, we're going to have a problem. You, you stay over there, and I'm going to go over here. Okay? Let us not be there. Let's not have contention between us, because we are brethren. You go that way. If you go to the right, I'll go to the left. If you go to the left, I'll go to the right. Okay? Stay away from each other, and let bygones be bygones, and then you go on with your walk. Okay? You can reminisce of what joy you might have had before as brethren, but when things like this happen, it's like, okay, it's, and it's always because of our flesh, you know, the skin suit that the Catholics worship, okay? But it's always because of our flesh. And when that happens, between actually saved, born-again brethren of the church of living God, new creatures, okay? Remember, God is not forcing us to do anything. Neither is Satan, okay? It's not at gunpoint, but when saved brethren have problems, they separate. It's like, oh, brother so-and-so. It's like, yeah, I hope he's doing well. I don't, don't really care for him, but I, I don't, you know, he's my brother. If he were to come to me out of nowhere, it's like, okay, Brad, I know we don't like each other, but can, I, I need your help. Can you pray for me? Could you, could you do something for me, please? It's like, absolutely. It's like, absolutely, brother. I will. I will. You know, that's how it works. But when there is this constant accusation, accusing, there's, there's a problem there. There's a big problem there. Go to Psalm 68. Psalm 68. And this is what we're going to be talking about. This infiltration of another kind where... Whatever means it is, through flesh, or whether they are just really good infiltrators that have wormed their way in and are pointing the finger and there to cause. And that's what, see, that's what coadjutors, infiltrators do. The real good ones can get in and pass off for a while. But see, there again, they always shoot themselves in the foot. And someone who calls themselves a brother, who is constantly at odds with everybody, Constantly. Constantly. That's kind of a red flag. 
kind of a red flag. We're going to look at this. Psalm 68. We will be reading verses 1 on to verse 11. Incidentally, brother, this um, the order in which you're going to see some of the verses that you gave me are not in the way that you presented them. I know, you're, I know you know that, but just so you know. Psalm 68, verses 1 under verse 11. Now, pay attention. Let God arise, let his enemies be scattered. Let them also that hate him flee before him. Oh, and these people who say, Lord, Lord, and actually are teaching ecumenicalism, you know, self-righteousness, oh, you save yourself because you believe, or lordship, salvation, you clean yourself up, your life up first, then you go to the Lord, you know. These are the enemies of our Lord Jesus Christ. They, they are of Christ only in name, and they say, well, we, we all read the same Bible. Uh, no, we don't. We may use the scriptures, but not everybody reads the same scripture. Okay? Just because... These devils claim to be King James only, whereas, say, I am King James only. They don't believe on the same God that I do, or you do, if you are of the Church of the Living God. Just because, you know, they will use or make reference to the authorized version of scriptures means nothing. Means nothing. They use it as a facade to hide behind to fool those who are fools. As smoke is driven away, so drive them away. As wax melteth before the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. And again, those who are false, sooner or later, sooner or later, every single time, brethren, they're going to shoot themselves in the foot. It always happens. Some it takes more time with. Others, it's a little bit more obvious. But remember, God is the one who causes the division between the sheep and the goats. Okay? And notice here how it says in the first two verses, it's talking about the enemies of the Lord. Let God arise, let his enemies be scattered. And these enemies of ours are scattered. They're all over the place. They're scattered away. Like cockroaches, because that's what they is, see? They're like cockroaches. They scatter. As soon as the light comes on, they scatter and hide in their little nooks. Let God arise, let his enemies be scattered. Let them also that hate him flee before him. As smoke is driven away, so drive them away. As wax melteth before the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. Here's a turn. But let the righteous be glad. Let them rejoice before God. Yea, let them exceedingly rejoice. And who are the righteous? Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, just one verse. Who are the righteous? You're, you're righteous because you say you are? You're righteous because you just believe and proving yourself to be a thief and a robber going up some other way? Huh? Oh, you're righteous because... God loves everybody. God loves you. And he's a flip. Oh, no, you're righteous because you gave up X, Y, Z to get ABC, right? Uh, no. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, just one verse, verse 21. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we, those who are saved, might be made the righteousness of God in him. The righteousness of God in him. The righteousness of God. The God who justifieth the ungodly. Who justifieth the ungodly. When they come unto him according to his terms. Okay, you ready? Broken, contrite, and in fear of the Lord calling upon his name. Yes. Yes. And if he save you because he washes you from, his, from sin in his blood, um, you have his righteousness, not your own. Remember, it is by grace through faith. And again, as we have talked about at length before, someone who just believes is a thief and a robber. They go up some other way instead of going through the door. 
someone who says God loves everybody, everybody's going to be saved. There was something worth it in me for God to die for me. Therefore, I'm a good person. No, you're a thief and a robber. Or I gave up all this stuff. Now I'm ready to come to the Lord for repentance. No, you're a thief and a robber. Okay? The righteousness of God in him. God in you. He is in you. That is the righteousness, okay? God in you. And the only way you can have God's righteousness is if he saves you. Remember, it's not your salvation. You have God himself living within you, okay? Sing unto God. Sing praises to his name. Extol him that rideth upon the heavens by his name, Yah, and rejoice before him. Sing. I find it really funny <laughs> that a lot of these devils have a big problem with the old hymns. Have a problem and like to mock people for singing hymns. That that's that's like wow. Wow. Then again, they're probably more flavored to Catholic Christian contemporary music. Catholic contemporary music is what we ought to call it, to be honest with you. But I, I've seen that. I've seen that. That some of the, these devils that I've mentioned by name before, uh, they will mock and poke fun at people for singing hymns, the godly hymns. Hmm. That when you got somebody also mocking you because you want to sing hymns unto the Lord. Eh. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 on verse 21. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools who say in the heart, there is no God, but as wise, wise, wisdom, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Are they not? You, you, you heard about that flu Rona thing that first appeared in Israel of all places? You, you, you done any looking into that? Wow, some pretty silly stuff. Now, apparently now the coronavirus and the flu virus can merge into one. See, corona, okay, whatever it is, is basically a form of the flu. But see, what they're doing is they're trying to make a division between the two to separate Corona, Corona gonna get you, from the flu. Okay? <laughs> so, but also think of, think of it like this. But now that there's this thing called Flurona, brilliant name, so that could lead into, okay, you have a runny nose, you got a sniffle, you got a little, little cough, okay? You got a little of a head cold. <gasps> Corona gonna get you. You see, the days are evil. They're trying to blend that blend this together in order to. You got a sniffle. Corona gonna get you, huh? You blink. Oh, Corona gonna get you. You breathe. Oh, Corona gonna get you. <laughs> yeah. Twenty twenty two, dear brethren. It's going to be an extraordinary year. You watch. Sorry for that rabbit trail. Let's continue. Let's pick up for uh, verse 16 again. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Look at verse 17. The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. And you're told in verse 16, redeeming the time because the days are evil. So being unwise is to be foolish, and to be foolish is living and behaving as if there is no God. Right? Uh-huh. So we are to fear God and to depart from evil, but understanding what the will of the Lord is, not to be mixed with the world. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. And remember, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. The nations are drunk with the wine of her fornication. 
okay? Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Giving thanks always for all things, good, bad, indifferent, beautiful, and ugly, okay? Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Be thankful for all things, everything, good, bad, indifferent, ugly, and beautiful. Be thankful for all things. Giving thanks always for all things. Can we do that? Can we do that? Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Paul never talked about the fear of God. What are you reading? You ain't reading the scriptures, are you? Are you? No. <laughs> Go back to Psalm 68, picking up at verse 5. A father of the fatherless and a judge of the widows is God in his holy habitation. God setteth the solitary in families. He bringeth out those which are bound with chains, chains bound by the devil, okay? But the rebellious dwell in a dry land. See, the lost are taken, are snared by the devil, taken captive by, at him by his own will, okay? Chained, chained to this world and the fate of this world. But see, when God comes in and, and sets you free, okay, you're set free. Ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. What is the truth? Jesus Christ, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me, see. But the rebellious dwell in a dry land, a dry land where there is no nourishment, no water, no nothing of such, any kind of, anything. Dry, barren, chaff, desolate, waste. Hmm? O God, when thou wentest forth before thy people, when thou didst march through the wilderness, Silah, God who goes before you to find you out of place. Making reference, of course, to the Exodus. But in all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. Okay? In all your ways. Not just the ways you want, but in all your ways. Acknowledge the Lord, and he will guide your paths. Okay? Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 on to verse 7. You go check that out. Okay? Pause it and go check it out. Okay? Ask for ask the Lord to guide you. He will go before you, before you. You gotta go there and get it. Yeah, okay, because he's not just gonna drop it in your lap. You gotta go get it. Okay? But he's gonna go before you to prepare things for you, to make a way for you. Okay? Who's in control of your life? Is it you or is it the Lord? The earth shook. The heavens also dropped at the presence of God. Even Sinai itself was moved at the presence of God, the God of Israel. And Sinai, of course, is Jabal el Laws. The top of Jabal el Laws is permanently burnt black by the fire of the Lord. It's not the one uh, that has St. Mary's whatever monastery at the bottom of it. Okay, but no, it's talking about Jabal el Laws. Okay. The earth shook. The heavens also dropped at the presence of God. Even Sinai itself was moved at the presence of God, the God of Israel. Thou, O God, didst send a plentiful rain, whereby thou didst confirm thine inheritance when it was reary. Are you being fed by the sincere milk of the word every day? Hmm? Be washed in pure water? the pure water of the word? Or are you engaging and drinking of the water that is fouled with the devil's feet because they walk through it? Hmm? God sends a plentiful rain. God sends a very plentiful rain for those of us of the church of the living God. Okay?
Thy congregation hath dwelt therein. Thou, O God, hast prepared thy goodness for the poor. The Lord gave the word. Great was the company of those that published it. Great was the company of those that published it. Those that published it. 1 Timothy chapter 3, just one verse. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15. But if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God. House of God. Is that a building? No. The house of God. We are of the house of God. Okay. We are his bones and his flesh. We are ambassadors for our Lord Jesus Christ, having the word of reconciliation and the ministry of reconciliation. Okay. We are his bones and his flesh. We are on earth. He who now letteth will let until he, the church of the living God, the body of Christ, be taken out of the way. Okay? Okay? So the house of God, belonging to Christ, we are of Christ. Okay? We are of the church of God. So when it says here, but if I know, but if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. The pillar and ground of the truth, which is the church of the living God. Church of the living God, inaccurately referred to as Christians. Okay? Don't worry, I'm not going to get started on that. Okay? But we are the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. What is truth? Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Those of the church of the living God, we are the ones to whom th th this has been committed unto us. Those of us who are of his body. And it is us, the church of the living God, that are ambassadors for Christ, having the word of reconciliation and ministry of reconciliation to go out there and to speak unto the lost, to witness unto the lost, to encourage and edify the brethren. Okay? That is laid upon us. The Lord through us will do this. Okay? The Lord through us will do this. Because why? We are the pillar and ground of the truth. And when you look at today what is called Christian, don't worry, I'm not going to go off on that. We need to drop that name, brethren. We need to drop that name. But see, the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. Okay? 2 Corinthians chapter 2. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Verses 14 on to verse 17. Now thanks be unto God, which always causeth us to triumph in Christ, giving thanks in all things, and maketh manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. For we are unto God a sweet savor of Christ, in them that are saved and in them that perish. To the one we are the savor of death unto death, and to the other the savor of life unto life. And who is sufficient for these things? For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as of God, in the sight of God, speak we in Christ. Look at verse 16. Look at verse 16. To the one we are the savor of death unto death, and to the other the savor of life unto life. And who is sufficient for these things? Now, we immediately think, well, on to those who are lost, we're death. But those who are saved, we are life. And that is true. That is true. But I want to I wanna suggest something to you here. Go with me on this. Look at verse 15. For we are unto God a sweet savor. Those of us saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God. And them that are saved, and in them that perish... 
the ones who are perishing are lost, okay? Notice that it is mentioned first, saved, and then in them that perish, lost. To the one, we are the savor of death unto death, and to the other, the savor of life unto life. And who is sufficient for these things? And yes, like I told you, to the lost, we are the savor of death unto death. And to those, you know, we die to ourselves, but yet, nevertheless, we live. Here's what I'm getting at. As the church of the living God, are you not dying to sin daily? Are there not things of that old man that is dying every day? Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9, 23 under verse 27. Luke chapter 9, verses 23 on to verse 27. And he said to them all, this is our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, talking. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. For what is a man advantaged if he gain the whole world and lose himself or be cast away? For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words, uh -huh, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he shall come in his own glory and in his Father's and of the holy angels. But I tell you of a truth, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the kingdom of God See the kingdom of God. Spiritual, not the actual physical, literal kingdom. Okay? Okay? That's so reference there. Kingdom of God is the spiritual. Because remember, sometimes kingdom of God could mean the actual physical, literal kingdom of heaven or the spiritual kingdom of God. In context, this is spiritual. Okay? But look at this. For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed. And then in verse 17, in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, for we are not as many which corrupt the word of God. And you might be saying, well, Brad, that's Old Testament, right? Because that's before the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay, Romans 6, 11 then. Romans 6, 11. Are we not to die to ourselves daily? Are we not to die to sin? Are we not to... Um, Come out from amongst them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. Now granted, while we are dying to ourselves, yet the Lord within us will mortify, quicken, you know, quicken our mortal bodies. Yes, yes. But are we not dying to self daily? Aren't you? Romans 6.11 Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead... Indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Oh, oh, oh and one more, one more, uh, a couple more actually. Um, Galatians chapter 2. Of course we have to go to Galatians chapter 2 for this. I am crucified, uh, verses 20 under verse 21. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. What if, for we, to the one we are the savor of death unto death. Death unto death. Now, I know, right away, it's like, well, death and the, the second death. I get that. There are two deaths there. I get that. Absolutely. And also the savor of life unto life. I get that. But are we not to die daily to sin to ourselves? But what about the other part here? And the savor of life unto life. As we, as the church of the living God, we die daily to sin. We die daily to ourselves that God may quicken our mortal, our mortal flesh, mortify the deeds of the flesh, okay, the deeds of the body, that God may quicken our mortal body, okay, make us alive. But the savor of life unto life, 
uh, Ezekiel chapter 13. Ezekiel chapter 13. Ezekiel chapter 13. I just wanted to make this mention to you for something for you to think about, okay? Ezekiel chapter 13, verses 22 on to verse 23. Ezekiel 13, verses 22 on to verse 23. Check this out. Because with lies, easy believism, ecumenical love gospel, lordship salvation, because with lies ye have made the heart of the righteous sad, whom I have not made sad, and strengthened the hands of the wicked, that he should not return from his wicked way. Oh, is that not what the uh, is that not what the easy believism heretic does? Makes you confident, yeah, to have you not have a hatred for sin. To actually give you confidence in sin rather than life. Hmm, isn't that something? And look what it says here. Because with lies ye have made the heart of the righteous sad, whom I have not made sad, and strengthened the hands of the wicked, that he should not return from his wicked way by promising him life. Therefore ye shall see no more vanity, nor divine divinations. For I will deliver my people out of your hand, and ye shall know that I am the Lord, by promising him life. So, to the one we are the savor of death unto death, and to the other the savor of life unto life. And who is sufficient for these things? And then it's followed up by verse 17. For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, like these easy believism heretics do. They only read a little smidge of Romans chapter 3, and they call that the pure gospel. And ignore all the context of everything else. Okay? The, the love gospel guys. God so loved the world. We love. And when they say love, don't judge people by, uh, by their sins. Don't make them aware of their sins. Don't judge them according to scripture. That's what they mean. And of course, Lordship salvation. You got to give up all this. You got to clean your life up first, like what Paul Washer teaches, and then come to Christ and then he'll save you. What are these people doing? They're promising life. They are promising these people life. Why? For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God because they're corrupting the word of God. And pointing the finger. Remember, brethren, when you point, how many fingers are pointed back at you? This is excluding the obvious fake devil coadjutor heretics who are obvious, who can hide themselves really well, but... Truth is, anyone with eyes to see can see that they're lost. That's excluding these people, okay? Because they're obvious. They're not so obvious. The ones for we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, but of sincerity. But as of God, in the sight of God, speak we in Christ, because Christ liveth in you. I thought the Holy Ghost lived in you. Who do you think Jesus Christ is? He is the Father. The Holy Ghost that lives in you, you have Christ in you, the seal until the day of redemption, the Holy Ghost. Uh, the Lord is that spirit, one God, spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Okay? Not three divine persons. A person is a spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Three divine persons that make one God. Hey, clock in England. You're the one who's crazy, pal, buddy. Okay, you, you, you're the one who's crazy. Think, three divine persons. A person is a spirit, soul, and body. Three persons make one God, but yet you serve one God. Uh, you're the one crazy, dear friend. You're the one who's crazy, okay? Put that in your, roll that up in your cigarette and smoke it, okay? But now, with this... Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. See, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. Getting a little ahead of myself. James chapter 4. Beg your pardon. I'm getting a little ahead of myself here. James chapter 4. Just finished up about how those who corrupt the word of God. James chapter 4. Now, we've got to remember about James. James is written for the Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. 
But there are things in within James that we can definitely get ex instruction in righteousness from, and there are some things that cross dispensational lines. But we've got to read this. James chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 11. Okay? James chapter 4. Oh, wait a second, brethren. Wait a second. Beg your pardon. One second. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm sorry, brethren. I see, see I have my notes here. <laughs> I'm, I'm misreading my notes. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 is what we want. Okay? I'm sorry for that. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Now, as we were looking at, in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 14 through 17, Paul was mentioning about two kinds, ones who are saved and ones who are lost, okay? What is he talking about, though? 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God, not using philosophy, okay, not using man's wisdom. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. What is he talking about? He wanted to know who was saved, okay? That's what he's talking about. Christ lives within you. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I. Christ liveth in me. I'm dead to the world, crucified with Christ, okay? Paul saying, for I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Who is truly saved? Who is truly saved amongst you? Okay, that's what Paul wanted to talk, wanted to know. He wanted to seek out those who were truly saved. Not just because they said they were. Okay, not just because they could utter, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Jesus is the Lord. And live like a devil. Okay, but no, no. He wanted to see who was truly saved. That's what he's talking about. And here's a contrast to this. Go to Mark. Go to Mark chapter 3. Go to Mark chapter 3. Mark chapter 3, verses 1 on verse 6. See, when brethren have a problem with one another, okay, they ought to go to each other as brethren. It's like, hey, brother, you know, you said something the other day that I don't agree with. Um, can we talk about it? It's like, okay, okay. Let's get our scriptures. Let's go through the scriptures and talk. That's how brethren ought to do things. A lot of people like to, well, they haven't offended me. Um, if you're going to a brother with something, is there not an offense of some kind? Okay. Like, oh, wait a minute. You might not be offended as insulted. But it's like, wait a second. See, brethren are supposed to go to brethren with problems, with questions. Okay? But what's the contrast? Which has happened to me. Oh, we saw something off. Didn't come to talk to me about it. And I know why. Because uh, two people who I'm mentioning, and they know who they are, they were lost. They're lost. They're infiltrators. But, oh, we, we saw something off in him. And then they just go about to cause confusion, pointing the finger. Mark chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 6. And they came in, oh, so nice, even offering help. So sweet, so innocent. And then all of a sudden, for certain reasons, what? All of a sudden, flip. We saw something off in him. Then trying to get brethren to turn against each other. Now, see, someone of the Church of the Living God can display those attributes, yes. But see, if they have God within them, God is going to be like, hey, hey, you two get together, okay? If you're not, then fine. Both of you shut your mouth and stay away from each other. That's how that works. But see, a false convert constantly pick at you, pick at you, gnaw at you. Why? Mark chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 6. And he entered again into the synagogue, and there was a man there which had a withered hand, and they watched him, whether he would heal him on the Sabbath day, that they might accuse him. And he saith unto the man which had the withered hand, Stand forth. 
And he saith unto them, Is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath days, or to do evil, to save life, or to kill? But they held their peace. And when he had looked round about on them with anger, and he had a cause to be angry, by the way, okay? Being grieved for the hardness of their hearts, there it is, he saith unto the man, Stretch forth thy hand, thine hand. And he stretched it out, and his hand was restored whole as the other. What did the Pharisees do? And the Pharisees went forth and straightway took counsel with the Herodians against him how they might destroy him. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. See, Paul wanted to find who was saved. And a mark of those who might be mingled in with the church of the living God, but might not be who they say they are. A red flag is constant picking, picking. There's one that I am aware of, I'm not going to name his name, who I apologize to because I, I was a jerk to him. But he is one that exhibits constant, everybody else is wrong but him, constant picking, constant accusing, accusing, constantly, constantly accusing. Hmm. Hmm. Really? Really? Why is that? Like I've told you before, it's flesh, but let's now go to James chapter 4. <laughs> now go to James chapter 4. I, brother, this... I woke up with... <laughs> uh, <laughs> like mine. James chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 11. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence, even of your lusts that war in your members, your members, your flesh? Okay? Ye lust and have not. Ye kill and desire to have, and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, ye have not, because ye ask not. And what is this lust? To be right? To have everybody look at you and see how great you are or something like that? Hmm? You know, I'm always suspect about people who stir up the pot unnecessarily. It's like, dude, why, why are you doing that? Why? Ye lust and have not. Ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. Ye ask. And receive not. Why? Because ye ask amiss that ye may consume it upon your lusts. What's the base of all this? Oh, this lovely, wretched, rotten skin suit. That's what it is. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God, whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Really? So if you're behaving foolishly as if there is no God, constantly pointing the finger? Isn't that what the world does? Aren't you, aren't you yoking yourself up with the world? Hmm? If you are brethren doing that, take this as a loving rebuke. Look, you might have problems with someone. Uh, leave them alone. Just leave them alone. Get away from them. Go on with your walk. But see, these devils, these, these, guys, these guys don't even count. That's their job, to stir up contention, strife, debate, to constantly gnaw and pick. That's why when you see those who call themselves of the Church of the Living God, who exhibit those tactics regularly, I'm suspect of that. I'm suspect of them. Okay? I'm suspect of them. Quite often, actually. Let's continue. Do ye think that the Scripture saith in vain, The Spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy, but he giveth more grace? Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. And look at verse 7. Submit yourself therefore to God. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Don't just go to him when you feel like it. 
Okay, in all your ways acknowledge him. Submit yourself. Give up. Give up control of your life because you're not in control. The minute you think you are in control of your life, guess what you are? And you're controlling your car to go right down to hell. <laughs> because if you don't submit yourself to God, you won't be able to resist the devil and he will flee from you. It begins with submitting yourself first to God. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. An accuser. An accuser. A constant accuser. Accusing brethren. A constant accuser. Apparently there's a lot of this going on right now. Why is that? Flesh. Every single time it's flesh. And if you're being led by your flesh. Now, yes, those of the church of the living God can have that happen. Yes, we can be led of our flesh. But see, we have God living within us. And the chastisement that comes upon us for doing that. Whoa! Whoa, boy! Yeah, that's pretty brutal when the Lord chastises you and corrects you for such. Okay, it's pretty, uh, pretty brutal indeed. But those who are not of the church of the living God, where is that chastisement? Hmm? Where is it? Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted, and mourn, and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning, and your joy to heaviness. There are people out there who take pleasure in starting strife. I know of Beelzebub of Blackpool, hidden in Lucifer's love. He loves, he gets, pardon my expression, he gets off on causing problems. And so do all his little minions. So do these Catholics. They, they, they love, they have a perverse enjoyment for causing division and strife, for being an accuser of the brethren. Accuser of the brethren. Don't worry, we'll look at that in a little bit. Be afflicted and mourn, weep, let your laughter be turned to mourning, and your joy to heaviness. If you're one of these people who finds perverse enjoyment by getting attacked or attacking, <laughs> you really need to check yourself. You need to sit down and examine yourselves, whether or not you truly are saved. Because, yes, persecution is going to come to us of the church and live God. But if you're going out there purposely to find it and taking pleasure therein and taking pleasure in attacking people. I remember everybody's favorite to uh, YouTube Jesuit, you know, Elmer from New York once said, uh, attacking heretics is a great ministry. And that's all he does for the most part. And he finds joy in that. Something wrong there. Something very wrong there. And here... And here's, here's what you do. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Verse 11. Speak not evil one of another, brethren. He that speaketh evil of his brother, and judgeth his brother, speaketh evil of the law, and judgeth the law. But if thou judge the law, thou, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. And again, you've got to remember the dispensational difference. This book is specifically written for the Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay, that's why he's talking about uh, you know judging the law and whatnot. We are to judge one another according to the scriptures. Absolutely, absolutely, and we are not to speak evil one of another uh, of the Church of the Living God. Um, those who are not of the Church of the Living God, they are our enemies. Okay, they are our en enemies. Yes, we are to expose them uh, sometimes by name. Yes. We are to expose them and let people know who they are. Yes. And remember, the Lord and his people referred to the lost as vipers, devils, dogs, foxes. Okay? Just keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Speak not evil one of another, brethren. I have done that before myself. I have spoken evil of saved brethren. 
and I have repented of that. Um, and I do, and I do repent of that. You know, we are not supposed to speak evil one of another. Okay? If we have a problem with someone, hey, even Paul and Barnabas, whose contention was so sharp that they split asunder, they didn't speak evil of one another. They just like, well, I, I disagree, and we ain't going to come to an agreement. It's like, fine, buddy. I'm out of here. I'm out of here. See ya. See ya. Okay? But see, again, what is at the root of these accusations? What are at the roots of all this contention? Flesh. And what did our Lord say of Satan? That he savoreth the things that be of men? Flesh. Not the things that be of God? Really? Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. We're going we're gonna to do some reading here. This is actually the centerpiece. Romans chapter 8. We're going, to, we're going to do some reading here. Can you handle this, huh? Can you handle this? Romans chapter 8, verses 8 on to verse 39. One second, brethren. Romans chapter 8, verses 8 on to the close of the chapter. Can you handle this? Like as we just finished in James chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 11, what is at the root of all of this? The flesh. And who is after the flesh? Oh, that'd be Satan, Lucifer, the devil. Romans chapter 8, verses 8 on the close of the chapter. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. In the flesh, living after the flesh, warring after the flesh. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, spirit of God, spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit, one God, okay? He is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Make alive, okay? Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify, put down the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. What spirit leads these people who are accusers of the brethren? Who, what spirit, who leads these people who are constantly at odds with everybody? Hmm. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption whereby they cry, whereby we cry, excuse me, Abba, Father. The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If so, be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Oh yeah, all these things that we are going through right now, remember the rich man and Lazarus? who um, in his life received evil things, but then he was when he died, it was in Abraham's bosom, then he received good things. And the rich man, who had his best life now, when he died, he was buried and went down to hell. Best life now, huh? Yeah. For the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself 
also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. Yes, we all are groaning. We are all groaning. But see, we of the church of the living God want to go to be with the Lord. Those who are not, they want to bring in that man of sin, the son of perdition. They're looking for a savior. Oh, a savior is going to be riding a white horse, having a single crown on his head, and has a bow with no arrows. Hmm. And not only they, the lost, but ourselves also the saved, which have the first fruits of the Spirit. Talk about the first fruit thing in the previous video. Even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption, to wit, the redemption of our body, the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble, the redemption of the purchased possession. Okay? For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray as for, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. I know for certain that when, uh, at first, when my heart problem was really, you know, just came upon me and learning what to do to, um, to combat it through the Lord and through brethren. I remember our best friend uh, let me know one day, it's like all of a sudden I dropped down and started praying for you because it was upon me to pray for you. And that was a particularly bad evening, I remember. And I told him about it. It's like, wow, wow. And also, we've done that with other brethren where we, you know, we were praying for you uh, on a certain time and the brother's like, that's when so-and-so and such and such was happening, you know? So yes, likewise the Spirit who is, the, who is God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And remember, if you ask things according to God's will, he'll hear you. But if you ask for things, you ask, uh, you ask, but you see not. Why? Because you ask amiss, that you may consume it upon your lusts. But if you ask things according to God's will, then we know that he hears us. Lord, can I have a thousand dollars so I can get me a PlayStation 4? Lord, I, I need a really big car. Uh, please give me the money so I can have a really big car. Yes, but you receive not because you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your lusts. Lord, I pray that our brother get home safely. Lord, I pray that you be there for our brother when he is mourning and going through a rough time with his own brother and that you comfort their family. That's praying after the Lord's will. Lord, I pray that you pr protect our brother in Australia, that you provide for him and keep him, so on. That's praying as our Lord would have us to pray for. Lord, that you bless them, that you bring spiritual fruit a thousandfold upon them. That's praying after God's will. See, when your will is to get stuff just to, to make your life easy, God knows you need these things, but that's not necessarily praying by God's will. Okay? Not necessarily. Verse 28, of course. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called the called, saved, according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, 
that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Did a whole video on Calvinism. If I can remember, I'll put it in the description box of this. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him, with him, also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? I, I got to say this. Elect. Okay? It's not the Calvinism elect. Elect. The ones who came to the Lord on his terms, broken, contrite, and in fear of the Lord, called upon his name, the way of the cross. That is the elect. The ones who go to the Lord through that way, through the, uh, the door, through Christ, through the death, burial, and resurrection, through the blood, through the crucifixion. That is the elect. God chose that way. That's what he's talking about. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Okay? It is God that justifies it. It is God who chose the way of the cross. And if you go the way he chose, you are going the way that he elected. Get it? Okay, let's continue. Who is he that condemneth? I wonder. It is Christ that died. Yea, rather, that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? Nakedness, sorry. As it is written, For thy sake we are killed all the day long. Savor of death unto death. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved, past tense, loved us, loved and gave. Those are past tense, people. Those of you love gospel guys who think that John 3.16 is the gospel. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Look at that verse. You know, you run into these people, God loves you. No, he doesn't. God's love is there to be had. But God does not love you. God so loved the world. Yes. God so loved that he gave. Past tense. God's love. Present tense. Nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us. Us. Those saved, born again, converted. New creatures in Christ Jesus. Okay. The church of the living God. From the love of God. Which is in Look at that, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. The love of God, separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. The love of God is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Okay, you want God's love, you got to go to him his way. Broken, contrite, and in fear of the Lord, call upon his name. It happens in one fluid event. It's not a step one, step two, step three. Are you saved, brother? No, it's not that. Okay. I can't explain it to you, lost people. But those of you who are saved, you know exactly what I'm talking about because you've been through the same process. It's one fluid event. Your brokenness and godly sorrow and total fear of the Lord, it happens in one motion, one event. It's not step one, step two, step three. It happens just like that. See, I can't explain that to you lost people because you're lost. You'd never get it. You would never get it. Mark chapter 3. 
Mark chapter 3 again. But now we want verses 22 on to verse 26. Mark chapter 3, verses 22 on to verse 26. And the scribes which came down from Jerusalem said, He hath Beelzebub, a black bull. And by the prince of the devils casteth he out devils. And he called them unto him, and said unto them, in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? And see, who are they accusing? They were accusing God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? That's who they were accusing. And those who are of their father, the devil, do the same thing. For those of us in the church of the living God. And the scribes which came down from Jerusalem. Notice it said the scribes. Who are the scribes? Those who write things. Who are the scribes today? Those who write the Bibles. And the scribes which came down from Jerusalem said, He hath Beelzebub, and by the prince of devils casteth he out devils. And he called them unto him, and said unto them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? You know, when you see these devils apparently being at odds with one another, number one, their father is Satan, so of course. But they're working for the same end. See, everything they do is a facade, is a show to be danced and strutted upon, okay? Remember what these devils do? Um, it's a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing, okay? So they put on all this glitz and glamour to make it appear as if they're Christians. And a lot of them don't even measure up to what a Christian is. And what a Christian is? <clears throat> Give me a break, okay? See, they're working in tandem to bring about the same end, the coming in of that man of sin, the son of perdition. We got to get out of here first. But that's what these guys are working for. And our Lord says, how can Satan cast out Satan? Like when you see two specific people who you know are lost, button heads, calling each other names. It's like, how can Satan cast out Satan? And if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if Satan rise up against Satan, and if Satan rise up against himself and be divided, he cannot stand, but hath, hath an end. And Luke cha uh, chapter 11, Luke chapter 11, verses 17 on to verse 19. But he, knowing their thoughts, said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. And see, Satan is working right now to, set, to bring in the new world order. <laughs> okay? His kingdom. Okay? That's not even going to last the full seven years during the time of Jacob's trouble. That's what all of this stuff with this nonsensical florona and all the, the steel of the Jesuit poniard and all this nonsense... It's to bring about the mark of the beast system, to bring about that one world religion, that one world government, that one world superpower that's going to be that kingdom, okay? The kingdom of the son of perdition. Every kingdom, verse 17 again, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and a house divided against a house falleth. If Satan also be divided against himself, how shall his kingdom stand? Because he say that I cast out devils through Beelzebub. Keep that in mind. When you, when you go to like uh, some of these devils channels, why, I don't know. I don't even watch their stuff. People send me links and tell me about it. I don't, I don't pay attention. You know, I got better things to do. I, I, I'd rather watch toilets flush than watch what they do. Okay? But, if Satan also be divided against himself, how shall his kingdom stand? Because he say that I cast out devils through Beelzebub. When you see these devils attacking each other, it's comedy. Laugh at it, because that's what it is. It's a front to make onlookers, give onlookers the interpretation, the impression that they're against one another, or that they're actually legitimate in some way. Beware of that. Okay? Beware of that. 
And if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do you, <laughs> by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore shall they be your judges. Okay, you're calling me lost, but yet you're the one who lives like a devil. <laughs> you, you know, Philippians chapter 1. Philippians chapter 1, okay? Philippians chapter 1, verses 27 on to verse 28, okay? Philippians chapter 1, verses 27 on to verse 28. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel, gospel good news of Christ, that whether I come and see you, or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that ye stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. See, brethren, we're supposed to strive together. But what happens? Flesh gets in the way, or you're not saved, and you spend your time accusing, pointing the finger, gnawing, scratching, digging, breaking, burning, whatever. Okay? We're supposed to strive together. Now, granted, because of our flesh, unfortunately, that's not always going to happen. But when it comes down, for example, the, the brother who I had the problem with in, in Canada, if he were to come under major fire, I would defend him. I would defend him. Okay? I would. Even though we both don't like one another that much. I would defend him. Okay? I would defend my brother. Because we're supposed to strive one with another, okay? Strive together, one with another, okay? Arm in arm, hand in hand, together, okay? And when you got these people who are there purposely to cause division, okay? Someone of the Church of the Living God could fall into that. Okay, not fall into it because you don't fall into sin. It's a choice, but you could be led away by your flesh thinking you're doing something right when actually all you're doing is causing division and strife. That's not what our Lord would have us to do. But see, someone of the Church of the Living God can get carried away into that. I shouldn't have said fall. That was wrong. Excuse me. Because you don't fall into sin. It's a choice. Okay? That saying that you just fall into sin, so it was his fault. It's his fault. They did this to me. This is why I'm the way I am. This is why I went astray and am preaching the love gospel. It's someone else's fault. No, no. You, you make choices. You, it's you. You're at fault. You are the man. Okay? But see, someone of the church of the living God, when you decide to go after your flesh, yes, you can get, you can fall into that. You can. It's happened to me. It's happened to you too. But see, the Lord in you will either really rebuke you and chasten you heavenly. Heavenly, yeah, your chastisement comes down from heaven because it's a beautiful thing because he'll correct you and get you out of that or he'll give you over to it and you'll get killed. And one, such one over to the Satan for the destruction of the flesh that the spirit may be saved. Verse 29. Or verse 28, excuse me. And in nothing terrified by your adversaries, which is to them an evident token of perdition, but to you of salvation and that of God. An evident token of perdition, being nothing terrified by your adversaries. Hmm. Brethren, I'm going to submit to you, if you come across someone who's claiming to be of the Church of the Living God, and all they are about is strife, contention, debate, seeking to separate brethren all the time, note that man or woman and see what will become. If they are of the Church of the Living God, pray for chastisement. Pray, hey, Lord. Lord, there's something going on here. Correct. Bring correction. If I need to be corrected, correct me. Okay? But correct. Step in here, Lord. And if it continues on, 
So that could be a very good sign that they ain't who they say they is. So, as my brother said and what he sent me, that's a dead giveaway. That's pretty much a pretty good dead giveaway. And all they do is bite, fight, cause contention, strife. Very good dead giveaway that they're not of us. Okay? Very good dead giveaway of that. Now, go to Revelation chapter 12. Because we see here in verse 28, And in nothing terrified by your adversaries, which is to them an evident token, token of perdition, but to you of salvation and that of God. And in verse 27, it says that ye stand fast in one spirit, with one mind being like-minded, okay, striving together for the faith of the gospel. Faith of the gospel. Faith in the good news that Christ died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures, that he shed his blood on the cross to cleanse you of your sin. You have faith on Christ. You don't have faith in your faith. See, you having faith in your faith you do have faith in your faith. I'm saved by my faith. I just believe. You're, you're having faith in your faith. That that comes from Mary Baker Eddy and the metaphysical mind science people. That is what the, uh, uh, what, is that, what are those idiots called? Um, the um, prosperity gospel guys. You got to have faith in your faith. You know, the object of your faith is your faith. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And see... You easy believism devils, again, that's what you have faith in. You don't have faith on God. You're all about, I just believe. You have faith in yourself. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. You got a foundation of sand there, boy. Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12. We want verses 9 on to verse 11. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. I do believe the Lord had me to do a video on um, Revelation 12. I think he did. I'll check. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. If I can remember, I'll put that in the description box too. Verse 10. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down which accuseth them before our God day and night. All the time. Always making accusations. Always. Always. You know, when brethren have a dispute, they're supposed to go to other brethren. Okay? And not do their dirty laundry in public. Okay? But see, the accuser of the brethren... Who is the accuser of the brethren? Satan. So, no marvel that his ministers are also the accusers of the brethren. Always accusing. I don't know if any of you remember that uh, Jesuit devil, um, Martin Richling. He started off on YouTube by accusing people. That's all he did. His very first videos, apparently, were all accusations. And that's what he continued to do. Accusation, accusation, accusation. Uh, uh, going after heretics is a wonderful ministry. Your father is Satan. You're an accuser of the brethren. You're an accuser of the brethren. And oh, people, you gotta be, you gotta beware. These people, these devils, can accuse you in very creative and colorful ways. I'm reminded of the hammer of God, who is still on YouTube. Okay, um, a Catholic, a Catholic who had Saint Ignatius of Loyola's um, picture for his thing or whatever. 
that guy, his his name is the Hammer of God. He used the mail. Uh, he used Latin to call his channel name or whatever, but it means Hammer of God. Okay, uh, he would use some of the most intelligent and colorful ways to insult me in con in comments. Um, it was actually amusing. Okay, he was very clever, very good with sentence structure. See, that's something that those who study trivium can learn how to do. Learn how to call you uh, the worst of all things by how you word your sentences, how you structure things, okay, in words, okay? That's something that Trivium teaches you, okay? And this uh, Hammer of God guy was just absolutely good at it. I mean, he was he was even better than Beelzebub of Blackpool. I wouldn't be surprised if the two were the same. But, I mean, I'm saying some of these accusers of the brethren, some of them are just dumb. No, not dumb, excuse me. They're stupid. Okay, they're stupid. They they resort to the school ground na 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 boo boo kind of childish schoolyard playground tactics, which you see a whole lot of these accusers do. I mean, some of the accusations that these devils have leveled, leveled against me, it's like, boy, you're a man, huh? But yet you're acting like you're a 16-year-old. You're acting like an 8-year-old because they're kids. Okay, but then again, you have the other end of that spectrum, those who, with men's words, like Hammer of God. Um, again, he, Hammer, you watch this? I, I mean, you, you, you insulted me all the time in your comments, but they were at least amusing. <laughs> they were, it's like, I would sit back and when I would read his comments, which were all insulting to me, of course, calling me lost and putting anathema upon me and stuff like that. But even then, it's like, Wow, this is really, really, wow, wow. If the Lord didn't allow me the time to learn how to decipher that nonsense, I would have think you were being nice to me. But no, you're, you know, smiling at me while pissing on my back. <laughs> Gotta watch out for that kind of stuff too. People who will use flattery. Flattery. Yes, yes. See, there are those devils out there who will accuse and do all this stuff openly with vicious words and stuff like that. Some try to hide it, but they can get really, they can get really uh, easily irritated and blow their cover. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Yeah. But then again, there are some that can compose themselves quite, quite well and use flattery and use niceness and use kindness. Kindness is a means to debase. Beware of those brethren. Beware of those types of people like that, brethren. Let's continue. Let's continue. Let's finish this up here in uh, Revelation by reading verse 11. How do we overcome these accusers of the brethren? And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. The word of their testimony. There are people out there who can have a wonderful, glowing testimony. But yet something doesn't add up with the testimony. Hmm. I've seen it. I've, I've been actually been given the privilege to hear quite a few testimonies. Eh. Some were like, Young man, <laughs> dude, dude, yeah, pra pra praise the Lord, but uh, then there are some that are just like, make you cry when you read them or you listen to them, uh, bring a tear to your eye. And then over time, it's like, wait a minute, man, you're doing devil stuff. A testimony is not a surefire thing. But it is a good thing to base off upon. It is a good thing to base off upon. Because, like I've said, some people out there can have really, really good testimonies. Beautiful, tearjerker testimonies. 
but yet their walk don't match the talk. But like I said, and even like this is implying, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. By the word of their testimony. And they love not their lives unto the death. A testimony will exhort the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, for how he has saved you, a sinner who is chief. And there are testimonies out there that I've heard that do that, but yet their, their walk don't match their talk. But like I said, a testimony is a good starting foundation, a good thing to start from, okay? You get someone's testimony, it's like, sounds pretty good. Give them time, it's like, whoa, you said what? Okay, 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 you've only been safe for a little while, okay, okay, let's talk, okay? All right, you hear their testimony, it's good, it's like, how long you been safe? 20 years. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah. Yeah. There again, brethren, you seek the Lord in all these things. And he will give you discernment. Because we, we got to remember, go to Proverbs chapter 17. Proverbs chapter 17. Oh, brethren, I've, I've heard some. I was given a testimony by a beautiful woman and it made us both cry, it made us both cry. And time going forward, it's like evidence was provided. Wait a minute, you ain't who you say you is. Gotta watch out for that. But unfortunately, that takes time. Right now, we don't have a lot of time, do we? But it does take time, patience. Yeah. Proverbs 17, verse 15. He that justifieth the wicked, and he that condemneth the just, even they both are abomination to the Lord. You see some of these devils being defended by, and this is what bothers me. Um, Beelzebub of Blackpool, hidden in Lucifer's love. He goes after little boys. He goes after young kids to convert them, to defend him. And then these young kids will call him a brother. These young kids, he that justifieth the wicked and he that condemneth, condemneth the just, even they both are an abomination to the Lord. For those who are out there knowingly defending these devils, it's an abomination to the Lord. Defending your evil. And what this is, uh, Isaiah chapter 5, Isaiah chapter 5, verses 20 on to verse 23. Had to come here. You had to come here. Isaiah chapter 5, verses 20 on to verse 23. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. Woe to you that defend easy believism. Woe to you that defend the Jesuitical, ecumenical love gospel. Woe to you who defend Lordship salvation. Woe to you. You're calling evil good and good evil. That put darkness for light and light for darkness. That put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine and men of strength to mingle strong drink. And remember, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, makes the nations drunk with the wine of her fornication? Which justify the wicked for reward. Oh, well, we see a lot of that going on in this American government, don't we? And in your government, wherever you are too. And take away the righteousness of the righteous from him, which justify the wicked for reward. We see that in politics, but how does it correlate to those on the online community kind of thing? Get people away from the truth. Get people following them. You know, just like how it was in the book of Acts. 
uh, where the they were all gathered together and the whole crowd was confused, filled with confusion. But yet they all ended up chanting, Great is Mary of Cath... <clears throat> Excuse me. Great is Diana of the Ephesians! For two hours. But they were confused, see. Which justify the wicked for reward and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. Go to Jude. Go to Jude. Jude does not have chapters. <laughs> Jude verses 12 on to verse 16. About these people who are accusers of the brethren. Worm their way in. These are spots in your feasts of charity. Charity is self-sacrifice, remember. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, basically going unchecked. But see, if they're constantly accusing the brethren, hmm, clouds they are without water, carried away with winds, Reminds me of Shakespeare. Trees whose twee, uh, trees whose fruit withereth, without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. Remember in Psalm 68 about how they dwell in a dry land? Parched. Trees, without, uh, trees whose fruit withereth, without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. Why is that? Because they have no water. Raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, which is an evident token of perdition. Wandering stars. And a lot of them think they are the biggest stars on earth, don't they? To whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. And in the book of Enoch also. <coughs> what I expected that, were you? And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have ungodly committed, and of all their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Verse 15, we could do a whole video on verse 15 alone. One of the tenets of those who are involved in the Jesuitical, evil, satanic, ecumenical love gospel created by the Jesuits, not going to name anybody, of course. <laughs> uh, right, Lottie? Yeah. Uh, judgment upon the lost. You pray for God's judgment. Maybe that judgment upon the lost, upon the wicked, might open their eyes. If one of these guys who have made their choice, who is serving Satan, and they see their Jesuit brother die because they were evil, and God's like, you're out of here, you're causing to, you're, get, get, okay? Maybe that one guy who sees his Jesuit brother die be like, oh, wow. Wow, I ought to reconsider things. See, asking for God's judgment upon the lost is not a death sentence, okay? It could to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed, okay? So see, God's judgment could wake them up to this like, wow, wow, I've done some real evil things. And of all their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Then again, you have to keep in consideration those who have made their choice and know about this. And if judgment come, all they're going to do is continue to curse God. But see, God's judgment, you pray for God's judgment to be upon these evil devils. Hopefully, through that judgment, they could be convinced of all their ungodly stuff and maybe repent. Or unless they've made their choice, they're just going to continue. But see, 
asking for God's judgment, praying for God's judgment upon the wicked, upon the lost, is not always a death sentence, young man. It could lead to life because our God would much rather be merciful because he delighteth in mercy. Okay? Verse 16. And here it is. These are murmurers. When you think about it, the accusers of the brethren, that's all they're doing. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. Like bringing up certain uh, topics of strife and contention just to get noticed. Shame on you for doing that, by the way. Having men's persons in admiration because of advantage, catering what you say to get people to pay attention to you, to tickle their ears, to uh, warm up their flesh so that you can get an advantage. Some of these devils, they will try, they will sometimes speak right things in order to get people's advantage, to get them to side with them and then turn on them. And then to, because their ways are always movable, okay, then to turn on them. They do these things because they have men's persons in admiration because of advantage. And Satan savors the things that be of men, not of God. And these are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. And some of these guys, they create enough strife, cause enough division, point enough fingers. Maybe, hey, maybe they'll get their own little uh, click group following. Maybe they can become their own little ites of some kind. I don't know. I don't know. But having men's persons in admiration because of, because of advantage is correlates unto Satan, unto the devil. When you purposely bring up contention among brethren, just so it will advance you in certain ways or in popularity or that you'll get people to look at you. Dude, that was, that was wrong. That's wrong. That's wrong. Someone of the Church of the Living God ought not to do that. Someone of the Church of the Living God could do that. But see, it's a constant problem in those who are lost. And always, always pointing the finger. Always pointing the finger. And you also got to remember too, brethren, they have men's persons in admiration because of advantage. And they can get a large following and persuade a lot of people to well, well they will chant great as Diana the Ephesians for two hours. Uh, John 16, verses 1 under verse 3. These are the times that we are living in, brethren. These things have I spoken unto you that ye should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. And these things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father nor me. <laughs> I'm sent screenshots quite often of some of these people in these comment sections, man. Uh, I don't... I rarely nowadays comment on videos. I, I rarely even comment on brethren's videos. I would, of brethren's videos who I watch, um, I, I would, I go to them personally because I, I have means to contact them personally, which is, which is good. But uh, I rarely, rarely, I will every once in a rare while comment in a video, but it's usually pretty fruitless. Usually. Sometimes people will comment good, positive things, yes, yes. But, I mean, usually, though, in a majority of comments, the most of the time, they're pretty fruitless and pretty ruthless. Anybody 
can hide and have courage behind a plastic screen and be a keyboard warrior or a thumb warrior. You know, big tough guy. I, I bet you. A lot of these tough guys who, like, for example, attack me, I wonder what they'd be like in person. On that, if uh, Beelzebub of Blackpool were to one day matriculate here in Illinois, that would be that would be a different situation because there's only one reason why that devil would show up anywhere near me. And what would result with that? Uh, either or. Either he would kill me or I would kill him. <laughs> because if Beelzebub of Blackpool suddenly and I hear behind me, Accountable KJV, and I turn around, I'm like, Oh, and we're standing mano a mano. Unfortunately, because that man has made his choice, he's serving devil, he's serving the Satan, he's filled with devils, he will never be saved, okay? He's a devil, he's going to hell. And if he were to appear before me, the only reason he would come here would be to kill me. And I have a wife that depends on me, so between us it would be either he'd kill me or I'd kill him. And hopefully he wouldn't have a car or a baseball bat. Then I would be in a lot of trouble. <laughs> but like I said, anyone can be a brave keyboard warrior or thumb warrior. I wonder how tough these guys would be if encountered face to face. I really do. I really do. I really do. I wonder how their zeal would be if you were to encounter them face to face. I wonder. Would you have that same zeal or would you just try to be violent? I remember, um, oh, what was his name? His name was Chris, who, um, oh, Hen Her Herndon, Chris Herndon. <laughs> Some of you might remember that name. Um, that guy, when he would get mad at people, he would threaten to beat people up. That frightful, um, Berean guy up in Canada, uh, he's, I, I've seen that. I, I've been sent screenshots. That guy, he threatens violence on people too. <laughs> now, see, those types of people, if you were to encounter them in reality, I think they would back up their, their things with fists and violence. Okay, but most of the times, I doubt it. I doubt it. I doubt it. Go to Galatians chapter 4. You gotta remember, brethren, at the end of the day, Satan is a coward. Satan is a coward and all those who serve Satan, because they fear man, it's for them easier to fear man than it is to fear God. And at the end, you're gonna be terrified and wetting yourself at the great white throne of judgment. You have no concept of the fear of God. You equate the fear of God with fearing your Jesuit provincials like Mark Hunter. Okay? Okay, I say that. Can I prove that? No. But did I say that? Yes. Yes. See, they equate, they equate the fear of man with the fear of God. What's the solution to this? Galatians chapter 4, verses 12 on to verse 20. Brethren, I beseech you, be as I am, for I am as ye are. Ye have not injured me at all. And you got to remember, there's an old saying that kids used to say, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words can never hurt me. But there again, sometimes people can hurt you to the point with words that you would rather that they throw a stone at you and beat you with a stick, right? Yeah. Ye know how that through infirmity of the flesh I preached the gospel unto you at the first. And my temptation which was in my flesh ye despised not, nor rejected, but received me as an angel of God, even as Christ Jesus. Where is then the blessedness ye spake of? For I bear you record that if it had been possible, ye would have plucked out your own eyes and have given them to me. Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? I've had people turn on me because of a video that the Lord would have me to do and it did kick something 
or uh, spoke against something that they helped. There's a young guy who came across the channel here uh, a while ago. And uh, <laughs> if you're watching me, young man, I, I, I feel sorry for you. Um, he got offended because your pets aren't going to be in heaven with you. Okay? Your pets are not going to be in heaven with you. Okay? Spirit of the beast that goeth downward to the earth. Okay? Um, fluffy, your little cat or whatever. They're not going to be in heaven. You, you kids, I'm sorry to break that to you. Your pets are not going to be in heaven with you. Okay? Sorry to break that to you. But I had someone go off on me and call me a heretic because, because of, you know, <laughs> your heaven, your pets aren't going to be in heaven with you. But he went away from, started calling me a heretic and stuff because of that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, something little like that. And of course, um, of course, with the skin suit thing, which is, a you know, totally kicks you Catholics and reveals you Catholics for what you really are, Catholics. Um, but whatever, you know, that happens. When you speak the truth, am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? They, the they, those who are not of the church of the living God, these coadjutors, these infiltrators, they zealously affect you, but not well. Yea, they would exclude you that ye might affect them. Get you broken off and get you away from the truth so that they, that you, can puff them up. Which is a lot of what these devils try to do. But it is good to be zealously affected always in a good thing. And there is nothing good but what? One, that is God. Okay? But it is always, but it is good to be zealously affected always in a good thing. To be zealously affected in God. And not only when I am present with you. In other words, not just while people are looking. What you are in Christ is more evident of when it's only the Lord looking and no one else. My little children, of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. I desire to be present with you now and to change my voice. For I stand in doubt of you. And there it is. I stand in doubt of you. Because why? Constantly accusing. Constant accusation. If you've got a problem with someone, brethren, and he is your brother, okay, Titus 3.10, then go away. Okay, it's pretty simple. I have put that into practice myself with several people, several people who I consider brethren, okay? Put that in practice, okay? We're not going to get along. Why? Because of flesh. It is what it is. You stay over there. I'm staying over here. We're done, okay? But to constantly be accusing, being an accuser of the brethren, Hmm. I desire to be present with you now and to change my voice for I stand in doubt of you. All accusation and no edification. Ephesians 6, verses 12 on to verse 14. Ephesians 6, verses 12 on to verse 14. As many as desire, as many as desire to make a fair shoe in the flesh, they constrain you to be circumcised, only lest they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. There are some uh, individuals out there who I would truly hope would turn and truly get saved and just start opening your mouth about what we already know. Wishful thinking. Let's reread re this from verse 12. 
As many as desire to make a fair shoe in the flesh, they constrain you to be circumcised, only lest they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. For neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law, but desire to have you circumcised, that they may glory in your flesh. They don't walk their talk, but yet they want to break you away from the truth that, you can, that they can glorify themselves in you. Yeah, and what's the base that they're glorifying in? Flesh, and Satan savoreth the things that be of man, not of God. Man, flesh. But God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. See, crucifixion is death. And right here, Crucified unto the world. I am dead, but nevertheless I live. Because Christ lives within me. And you are crucified unto that. And the temptations and the tactics of that. We're not going to be, I mean, <laughs> the God can deliver us out of temptation, but remember, not at gunpoint. For in Christ Jesus Neither circumcision availeth anything, circumcision, a work of the flesh, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. And as many as walk according to this rule, peace be unto them, and mercy. Uh, as many as walk according to this rule, peace be unto them, and mercy, and upon the Israel of God. Amen. Amen, amen. And now let's let's finish this up in Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 6. Proverbs chapter 6. Galatians 4, brother. Um, that's why we didn't look in 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 10 under verse 20. Virtually pretty much the same thing. Proverbs chapter 6, verses 9 on to verse 15. How long wilt thou sleep, O sluggard? When wilt thou arise out of thy sleep? Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty come as one that travaileth, and thy want as an armed man. And if you read from the context of this, because today is the 6th, uh, he begins with, go to the ant, thou sluggard. It's talking about not preparing, being lazy. But I want to interject this to you. Look at verse 11. So they, so shall thy poverty come as one that travaileth, and thy want as a, an armed man. Yet a little sleep. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Verses 4. On to verse 7. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light, and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep in the night. Oh, wait, 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 wait. excuse me, excuse me. Therefore, let us not sleep. Verse 6 as do others, but let us watch and be sober. And you compare this with uh, Proverbs chapter 6 about being prepared. Let us watch and be sober. It says here in verse 6, Therefore let us not sleep as do others. Let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. And they that be drunken are drunken in the night. Drunk with the wine of the wrath of her fornication. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. And they that are drunk, and they that be drunken, are drunken in the night. Back to Proverbs chapter 6. Continuing from verse 11 on to verse 15. So they, so shall thy poverty come as one that travaileth, and thy want as an armed man. Not keeping an eye out, 
not uh, examining yourself daily, hmm? might be led away to be an accuser of the brethren. Hmm. Are you saved? He winketh with his eyes. He speaketh with his feet. He teacheth with his fingers. Look at that. He winketh with his eye. If you're a right eye offendee, pluck it out. He speaketh with his feet, traversing places that you shouldn't go to. Think about these devil online warriors, keyboard warriors, that are in one place overseas, but go all over in, on the internet, looking at things they shouldn't. But pay attention. He winketh with his eyes. If your eye offend thee, pluck it out. Okay? He speaketh with his feet. If your feet offend you, cut them off. He teacheth with his fingers. If your hand offend thee, cut it off. Why? It's better to go into life maimed and halt than to have uh, these things to be cast into hellfire. Isn't that interesting, huh? Frowardness is in his heart. He deviseth mischief continually. He soweth discord. Therefore shall his calamity come suddenly. Suddenly shall he be broken without remedy. And hence, the accusers of the brethren. That is what awaits you. Therefore shall his calamity come suddenly. Suddenly shall he be broken without remedy. Like I said, brethren, there are those out there of the Church of the Living God who can give themselves over to this or that and start making accusations and just leading to accusation upon accusation, causing strife and contention. But if someone is of the Church of the Living God, God's going to get involved and rectify that situation or deliver that such a one over to be destroyed. But someone who is always at odds, always causing contention, always accusing people, I stand in doubt. I stand in doubt. Anyway, that is going to be it for this video, brethren. Like I said, um, this, some of this, uh, I woke up with this on my mind this morning and then a brother sent me some stuff. It's like, wow, this is what the Lord wanted me to speak on today. So <laughs> here it is. Um, more videos are coming. So got this, uh, got this wonderful thing that the three of us well, the four of us, excuse me, work together on, uh, which is going to be probably, I hope, come tomorrow. But anyway, thank you. Thank you, brethren, Church of the Living God. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for helping us. We pray for so many of you every single day. And just thank you for all that you have done. Thank you. We love you. We love you very much. Please consider these things. Hopefully this... Uh, Hopefully this video will help and edify, hopefully. Yeah. You know, you know, brethren, as we started this little adventure of ours, okay? As we start this little started this little adventure of, of ours, Psalm 133. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity, striving together for the faith of the gospel. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard that went down to the skirts of his garments, as the dew of Hermon and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. But as we get closer and closer to the catching away, brethren, the falling away, which has been going on now for quite, quite some time, it's just going to get worse. It's just going to get worse. I personally believe that this year, 2022, we are going to see an unimaginable amount of those falling away. I, I, I really believe that. I really believe that. 
um, that those who many think are of the Church of the Living God are going to just come right out and be revealed as the lost devils that they really are. I believe it's going to be even more so heightened this year as we continue down this path that is going to lead us on to being redeemed for the um, time of Jacob's trouble. And this it's only the sixth today, brethren. So, anyway, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching this. If you do, we love you. We will see you in the next video. Lord willing.